Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College. This is Digital Electronics. This lecture is entitled Additional VHDL Topics, The Case Conditional Statement. If you remember in our previous lecture, we went over three different types of if statements, namely the if then, if then else, if then else if arrangement. And we kind of left off at this if else if then else if statement here. It's nesting it. It's giving us alternate paths within that if. And if you look at it, it's ugly looking. If this, then that, else if, then this. And what we're trying to do is give ourselves an alternative to that ugly looking if then else if conditional statement. And that's what's known as a case statement. All it does, it's kind of the same thing as an if then else if nested ifs, but it just makes it a little bit easier to read and implement and additionally, um, it needs, there is something specific to the case statement. We have to, we must account for all possible values that can be applied to this case block. And how we do that is with this statement others. Let's go ahead and describe how a case statement would do the exact same thing. So here's how a case statement would do the exact same thing. And notice how it's just a little bit easier to read here. And I've left something off here purposely. Okay, so we've got a process in between the process. Oh, excuse me. In the process, we've got the sensitivity list, i.e. the things that make a tick. In between the process and begin, we could potentially do some declarations like a variable or an internal signal or components, just like in an architecture, then we begin, we begin the process. Kind of indent it, give ourselves some of those things that will help us out. Okay, we're starting a case statement, we're ending the case statement. Indent it again. What is the case statement? In case, one of those inputs from the sensitivity list. Okay, it's basically, it's looking at one of those inputs from the sensitivity list. And what it's doing, it's evaluating each condition for that. So let's say there's a signal A from the sensitivity list. Case A is, what you do is just list all the possibilities of A. When A is equal to condition one, it implies, notice that left to right arrow, expression one. That could be a uh, concurrent assignment, concurrent signal assignment where the arrow goes right to left, you know, assign X equal to the binary string four zeros. Okay, that's an example of expression one. It's one of those things you're choosing. When it's condition one, do expression one. When it's condition two, do expression two. Condition three, expression three. And then in this particular example, we want to account for all possible conditions. Case statements end with this thing called when others. All other possible combinations. If condition one is not met, if condition two is not met, and if condition three is not met, I have to account for all possible cases. It's when others. Do expression four. So you don't necessarily need to account for all four conditions if the fourth condition can be just brought up and wrapped up as this others. So let's just do a quick example of a case statement application in this particular case. It's a decoder. It's a three input decoder, and it's going to have eight outputs. Change my mind. Let's not do a three to eight decoder because that's kind of simple. Oh, let's do kind of a special decoder application. This is kind of preparing you for the finite state machines that which we'll be dealing with later. What is a finite state machine? It's uh, something with a state that could potentially advance to the next state based upon certain input conditions and advance and regress and change. And we want to go ahead and decode that output. If you could think about this, what is that decoder? These could be seven different devices. And we want an active low output on one of the seven devices when the input A2 to A0 is that number. So when A2, A1, A0 is 0, 0, 1, it's 1, we want output 1 to go low and only output 1. You could think of this as like the start state for repetitive, you know, some repetitive action, activate motor one. But when it goes to state two, zero, one, zero, activate motor two, activate state three, activate perhaps solenoid three. And what's going to go on is, is as we progress or regress within those states, you know, and we're, we're going to design a finite state machine to do something like this based upon certain inputs and its present state, we can uh, walk through this decoder and form some industrial process, you know, activate this, activate that in this sequence. Uh, and here's the deal is, is check this out. When I want none of these things to go low, I'm going to put zero on there. So I should have that output. So when I put triple zero on A inputs, I should have everybody go high because again, we're looking for that low. This is a perfect example for a case statement. I could, yeah, definitely I could make a decoder 
out of a bunch of NAND gates, a bunch of three input NAND gates, and potentially invert some of those inputs to create this decoder. Why not use a case state? What do you think is on the sensitivity list? Obviously A. Okay, we're making a decision based off A. When A is triple zero, implies that X should get the string one. When A is one, it should get the string six ones with a zero, depending on you've defined X from seven down to one or one, two, seven. So what would a case statement look like this? And again, you've got to remember that final statement when others, you should go ahead and have a, basically you're closing out the whole case statement. So here's my example of a case statement, what this thing should look like. Okay, so here's my attempt at a case statement describing how this decoder should work here. And again, I'm not finished the whole thing here. I've left a, something dangling. But what I'm doing here is I'm accounting for is what is my sensitivity list? Well, it's obviously A, that's my input. I'm going to begin that process and then I'm going to end that process. Okay. Inside that process, I'm going to indent. Okay, I'm going to start my case statement and a case block here. In case A is, and this is what I'm saying here, from that sensitivity list, when A, which I've defined as a standard logic vector three down to zero, is one, have the output, oh, excuse me, when A is zero, zero, one, implies that X is assigned the following string. And I've defined X as a standard logic vector seven down to one. So which one goes low? One. When A is two, which one goes low? Two. When A is three, which one goes low? Three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven. So there's something out there that I have not included to finish up this case statement, when others. When others has been kind of that catch-all statement. If there's unknown input on A, or potentially when A is triple zero, what do I want? What I'm going to do, I'm going to assign X to all ones. I'm going to put seven ones. And there you go. So when others, i.e. when A is triple zero or some unknown state, don't activate anything. The case statement is really, really neat. It's accounting for a lot of behavioral descriptions in this particular case, a uh, decoder here. We're going to make use of the case a lot in some later examples and labs.